Hello, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Map and plan labelling questions come up regularly in the listening test and are particularly common in section 2. The subject for map and plan questions will typically be a tour of a specific building such as a hotel or a museum or the description of a place. In map questions the speaker will often talk about proposed changes to a location. Your task is to listen to the recording and identify different areas, features or rooms. You'll often be given a list of words from which to choose the correct answers. If no list is given, you'll have to identify the answers from the recording. The graphic will contain lots of clues as to the missing words, especially in the labels already present. This lesson on map and plan questions includes sample questions, the strategy and tips, vocabulary, a practice question and the answers. Here are two sample questions to give you an idea of what to expect. The first is a map question. In the recording for this question, the chairman of the Highways Committee is explaining the new traffic regulations and parking arrangements proposed for Granford at a public meeting. And here's a plan question. For this question, the speaker is a librarian of a new town library. They are talking to a group of people who are visiting the library for the first time. We'll be using this second example to practice the strategy and tips I'm about to show you. You'll have a short time to prepare before the speakers begin talking. Use this time to familiarise yourself with the question and focus your mind on what you need to listen out for. First, read the instructions very carefully, as the wording, and what you have to do, will vary in this type of question. For example, the instructions for the first sample question state, Write the correct letter, A to I, next to questions 14 to 20. So, you must write a letter next to each word in the answer list. In the second example, they state, Choose five answers from the box and write the correct letter next to the questions 11 to 15. In this case, you will write the answer on the plan itself. It's essential to do exactly as stated. You must write the letter, not the word, or your answer will be marked wrong. So, if answer 11 was computers, your answer would be 11C, not 11 computers. Next, read the labels and title. Learn as much as you can about the map or plan from the existing labels and the words in the answer list if there is one. Some maps and plans will also have a title, which is another big clue as to the context of the question and what the recording will be about. For example, our sample map has the title Proposed Traffic Changes in Granford. Knowing this should bring a few ideas to mind as to the sort of information that will be included in the recording. The more familiar you are with the vocabulary and the layout of the graphic, the easier it will be to understand and follow what the speakers say. If there's no word list, try and predict what type of words the answers will be from the context. For example, is it a room, a building, a street name? a feature such as a pond, or a facility such as a public toilet. Generally, the speaker will begin their talk by introducing themselves and the subject or purpose of their talk, so this will also to help you to understand the context. One of the skills needed to answer map and plan questions successfully is to be able to visualise what the place being described looks like. We use maps and plans in everyday life so your brain will already be used to doing this, although you normally do it subconsciously, without even thinking about it. In the precious seconds you have for preparation, imagine that you are standing in the location represented on the graphic. What can you see around you? Try this now. Imagine that you are at the entrance to the library shown in this plan. Picture yourself walking inside. Note the different rooms you see, as identified by the labels on the plan. Pause the video.
video and have a go at this. Even a few seconds spent doing this will help you to follow the information or directions given by the speaker and to identify the correct answers. You can do a similar visualisation with a map question. Imagine yourself standing at a particular point and picture what you can see around you, noting the different buildings and other features. Pause the video again and try this with our sample map question. The answers will come in the same order in the recording as they are listed in the question. So for our practice question, you'll hear 11 first, then answer 12 and so on. This makes it easier to pick out the answers than if they were in a random order. To do well in map and plan questions, you need to understand the language of location and direction. A location is where something is in relation to another object or place. A direction is the position towards which someone moves or faces. Here's some common vocabulary of location. Near, next to, in front of, beside, between, across from. Common vocabulary of direction includes turn right, turn left, go straight on, go past, head south, northwest. Knowing this vocabulary is so important to your success that I've written a whole lesson on it. You'll find a link to this lesson in the notes below this video. In all types of listening questions, you need to listen out for synonyms and paraphrasing. As you're listening to the recording, remind yourself that you're not necessarily looking for the exact words as in the question, but the same meaning. So for example, if an answer is reference books, the speaker might say, in the corner, Next to the history section, you'll find 10 shelves of encyclopedias, dictionaries and directories. We'll look at the synonyms and paraphrasing that's been used in our practice question when we review the answers. The examiners may try and catch you out with distractors. A distractor is a word or phrase that changes or corrects the original piece of information given. So, you may be given an answer and then have it taken away again. Here are some sample sentences containing distractors. I've highlighted the relevant words. The shop next to the bakery was a newsagent, but it's now been replaced by a charity shop. In the original design, the cafe and bookshop were next to each other. However, the plans were changed to locate the bookshop by the exit. When the alterations are carried out, the storeroom will become an office. No, sorry, that's been altered. It will be the new staff room. The use of but and how are particularly common distractors, but there are many different words and phrases that can be used to change or correct a piece of information, so be alert for them. My final tip is to never leave a blank space on the answer sheet. If you miss an answer, take an educated guess. This gives you at least some chance of getting it right. Don't stress about a missed answer or it will affect your ability to answer the next set of questions. Just make your choice and move on. You now have the opportunity to practice this strategy on our sample question. Here it is again. Pause the video, listen to the recording and choose the correct answers from the list A to I. Write them down so that you can check them later. When you've completed this practice activity, continue the video. I go through the answers next. To hear the recording, click the link in the notes below this video titled Library Plan Recording. Here are the correct answers. Pause the video while you check them against your own. Then we'll go through them one at a time. Answer 11 is H. Reference books. Here's a sentence this answer appears in. I've also underlined the positional and directional language used. I've included this information for each answer. Well, as you see, my desk is just on the right as you go in. 
and opposite this, the first room on your left has an excellent collection of reference books and is also a place where people can read or study peacefully. There's no paraphrasing, but note how much positional and directional language is used in this one sentence. This is why it's so important to develop your knowledge of this type of vocabulary. Answer 12 is G, periodicals. Here's the sentence it appears in. Just beyond the librarian's desk on the right is a room where we have up-to-date periodicals, such as newspapers and magazines. Again, there's no paraphrasing, but you do need to understand the positional and directional language. Answer 13 is D, local history collection. Here's the sentence. If you carry straight on, you'll come to a large room and this is the main library area. There is fiction in the shelves on the left and non-fiction material on your right. And on the shelves on the far wall, there's an excellent collection of books relating to local history. This answer is paraphrased in the recording. The speaker refers to the local history collection as a collection of books relating to local history. Answer 14 is B, children's books. Here's the sentence. Through the far door in the library, just past the fiction shelves, is a seminar room and that can be booked for meetings or talks. And next to that is the children's library, which has a good collection of stories and picture books for the under 11s. For this answer, synonyms and related words have been used to paraphrase the information. Children's books are referred to as the children's library, and children themselves are referred to as under 11s. Finally, answer 15, which is F, multimedia, and here's the sentence. Then there's a large room to the right of the library area. That's the multimedia collection, where you can borrow videos and DVDs and so on. And we also have CD-ROMs that you can borrow to use on your computer at home. If you missed hearing the word multimedia, you should still have been able to get this answer right by identifying the related words, videos, DVDs, CD-ROMs and computer. Well, that's all the answers done. If you got any of them wrong, listen to the recording again and see if you can pick them out now that you're more familiar with the text. I hope you found this lesson helpful. Now practice using this strategy with other map and plan questions from past papers. Thank you for watching and goodbye for now.